Welcome to another Natron tutorial. In this video, we're going to be bringing in a logo to work with. We're going to animate it on the screen and then have it be uh, put a, a background with it as well to create a nice intro or outro that you could put on a YouTube video, for example. So you might already have your own logo. If you don't, or if you just want to follow along with this tutorial, we can go to pixabay.com and we can start typing in mountain logo. And we'll find the logo here. This is the one I want to use. And this has been uploaded by Metsicon, so we appreciate this user sharing this. It's under a Creative Commons license, free com for commercial use, no attribution required. So we can go ahead and just download this right here. Do the 640 by 480 and hit download. And I've already downloaded this before. So I've got it, I can open it up and see what it looks like. And we see right away, it has a white background. Um, so what we want to do is we want to bring this into Natron and I'll show you how to get rid of that white background. So we can just read it in. We could, we could do the left click and drag and drop it, or we can just read it in this way. We do a read node and select what it is. So it's this mountain logo right here. So now we have the mountain logo going into our viewer. Also, since this is the first file we imported, it changed our settings. It was 1920 by 1080, but it changed it to 640 by 640 because for all Natron knows, this is like the final thing we're going to be rendering out. And so it, it doesn't want to have any black space on the, on the sides, uh, tops or bottoms. So it just thinks it's going to be that. But we really do want this to be a 1920 by 1080. So let's change that. Um, so now that's changed there. Didn't it? Did it change it? Um, we'll be able to tell when we read in. So let's draw in our background now. So I want to do, under filter nodes, I want to go down to shader toy. And we will do this. So we have this nice background here going into the second part of the viewer. And if we play, this is just like a pulsating, the default thing from Shader Toy. We're going to change it though. So we go to Image Shader and left click on this black triangle. Then under Load from Presets, go down to Source. And then go to Whirly Noise Waters. And it changes this. This is like a, just video being rendered on our graphics card. So it does take a little while to play. So this isn't really video footage from a file, it's actually using this, these different math, these different settings to create uh, this animation of sort of like a, yeah, a nice watery looking shapes. It's really cool. But um, we want, to, we want to, to be able to see our logo on top of this. So I'm gonna break the pipe to our logo now, break the pipe to our shader toy, and we're gonna add in a merge node. So to do that, if we just click on the merge nodes and go to merge, so it's just floating out here. If it's if it attached somewhere, you can just break all the attachments. We want the B to go to our shader toy, because that's our background, and the A to go to our foreground image, which is gonna be our logo. And then we want the output to go to our viewer. So we see we have our shader toy background uh, going into the merge node. We also have our logo going into the merge node and coming out to the viewer. So now what we wanna do, let's move we can't click and move anything on here. So if we want to be able to move this logo or even to animate it, we need a transform node. So while this node selected, if we hit the T key on our keyboard, we can bring in a transform node. Also, while it's selected, we could just come over here to the transform nodes and grab a transform node. Or a third way we could do it is hit the tab key on our keyboard and start typing in transform and select a transform node. And then it's just out here, we can hold the control key and drag it in if ever it's not connected. And that's a way that you can do that. Once this transform node is, in, is connected though, we have this circle up here and we can left click and drag and move this over to wherever we want. Uh, we can also change the size of it so we can scale it up, make it larger. Uh, very nice. So now we have our logo here, except one major problem has a white background. So we could go back to the source file, open this up in GIMP or Photoshop, and remove that white background so that it's transparent, that's one option. If we were drawing up this logo like in Inkscape and just creating it from scratch, we might have just given it a transparent background to start with, but sometimes you just don't have a transparent background. So I'll show you how to get rid of that. We're gonna be using a keyer node to do, to do that. So in other videos, we've, we've used the keyer before. So while this is selected, we come over here to these keyer nodes. We've used the chroma keyer to remove a green background and make it look transparent. You can do that with a green or a blue screen. But we'll just come down to the keyer and we're gonna add a keyer inline here. So nothing changes so far. Um, 
but we go over to the settings and we want to select our key color. So click on this black over here and it gives us the eyedropper or a, like a color picker. And then we can hold the control key and come over and select this white. So we select a nice white pixel. Um, and we see that subtly changed this just a little bit already. But we can um, change the key or mode to screen. And then we change the output mode to pre-multiplied. And that gets rid of that background. Oh, actually, it's a little bit wrong. One sec. Let's delete the keyer. I think I did those steps incorrectly. So we'll grab our keyer node in again. And so let's change it to uh, the first thing we want to do is change this to screen. And bring this color all the way up on it. Nice. And then with the color all the way up, actually, the screen didn't matter. Oh, maybe it did. Yeah, change it to screen. Bring the color all the way up and then click on your keyer and choose. So hit the control key and choose a nice white color. And now we'll change this down to pre-multiplied. Wait, we're still seeing some red in there. So we want to get those red pixels out. You see, we're, it's not a perfect key just yet. We could also just choose white as our key color. Ah, let's just do that. So for some reason, I was there, the pixels weren't true accurately white. So instead of actually keying and selecting it, since I knew the background was white, I just clicked on the color wheel and chose white as the key color. Otherwise, some of these other colors would shine through like they were. We were getting that red hue coming through. Anyway, nice. So now we have this. We can play. And it'll go through and sort of render this nice thing. That alone could be a good logo. I mean, a good splash screen. But if we want to do something differently, we can add in um, some animation to this. So let's keep it, let's have it starting. Um, maybe we'll have it starting uh, at, where, where do we want to do here? I got to uncheck this key here now so I can just click. Let's have it start off screen down here. And what let's do, let's have it animate and, and come in. So at frame one, it'll be down here. And then we can double click on our transform node and right click on the transform and go to set keyframe all. It's very important. This is a part that might confuse you if you haven't watched previous tutorials because now we have our keyframe at one. And then we'll say by about frame 30 or even faster than that, frame 15, we want this to be here. So we'll see what that looks like. We go back, play. So it's kind of a fast, like a, a fast thing. We can do other things too. We can rotate it in, for example. If we go to set keyframe, and then uh, what we do is rotate this. So by the time it gets to frame 15, we want it to be completely 160 degrees rotated. Or can I, can I go further than that? Let's do 180. Can I just say 360? So I'm just going to tell it to do 360. Let's see if it'll do that. Yeah. So then we see how that looks like. So it's starting down there, and now we have it rotating 360 degrees. And the background's doing its thing too, you know. Um, and then we could do at frame 30, we could apply something else. Like we could, uh, we could apply some other effects, but I'm just going to keep this so it doesn't get too cluttered. We can do like a skew. So maybe we'll do this at, um, put that back to zero for here. And uh, when we get to frame 30, we'll set a keyframe for the skew. And we'll just have it kind of, by frame five, we'll have it go skew pretty exaggerated that way. And then by frame 40, we'll have it be back to zero. Just showing you an example of things that you could do. So now this looks like this. So we've got a nice little thing. We could also animate it off the screen. So if we go to frame 60, and then we say from here we want it to, uh, well, what we could do, we could do something crazy and just like just change the Y to like a thousand. Let's see here. We don't want to do, actually no, not at this frame. We don't want to do that. Let's go to starting at 60. We already have a keyframe. So we want to set another keyframe in the translate. And then by frame 70, we want just the Y to be, yeah, like a thousand. Oh, too much. 700. Oh, whoops. I was thinking 
thinking something different. So let's undo that. We don't want that to happen at all. We want that to just stay right where it is. Because I, I didn't want to move it. I was, no, well, I guess we could just move it. Let's just do that. Let's just move it all the way up to here at that keyframe. Yeah, that's not too bad. It kind of has a slow fade out on that one. So anyway, that's an example of how you can do a splash screen using Natron. And then uh, um, Natron doesn't work with audio at all. So what you would do is we, render, we need to render this out now. So we go down to our project settings. We want to change and have the last frame be about frame 100 maybe. So we change that to 100. And then we want to render this out to a file. So we actually, we need to write it is what it is. So we go to our um, write nodes and we do a we do a write node here, I mean on our image nodes. And let's put it on the desktop. And let's call it um, intro.mp4. That creates an mp4 file, or it creates the parameters to write an mp4 file. And then everything our, view, our viewer is seeing, so after this merge node, we can just break our viewer and have it go to the writer instead. So then we have our write node, and we have this, a couple different settings over here. But the mp4 settings are based on what we told it when we created the write node. Um, the frames per second should match our, our project, so 24 frames per second there. And then frames per second is going to be 24 frames per second here that we're writing to, so everything's good there. Uh, yeah, so we can click render and see if we render this out or if we get any errors. Sometimes you'll get errors. So it's going to start at frame one. It's going to render the whole entire project range. Um, it won't take long, so we're halfway done already. One thing, if you don't select it properly, you might be rendering out a sequence of images instead of an image file. So it'll create a hundred different images like on your desktop or wherever you tell it to. So make sure you don't do that setting unless you want it to be that. And then also you can change this over here to the frame range and you can manually only render certain frames or even a single frame if you want to just do the first frame for example and just render an image like for a thumbnail. People do that sometimes for a thumbnail for a video. I'll minimize this now and we'll click on our intro and see how it rendered. Cool. So there we go. We've got this rendering in, does a little thing there, and then goes out. And then this file is what we would take to put into our video editor, and then we can apply some music to it, uh, or we can, if we if we're creating like a adding this to the begin or the beginning or ending of a YouTube video, we would just put it in with our video editing software, and then that's at that point you throw in the audio and you know fade it in, fade it to black, or fade it out to your transition to your other the rest of your video. So I hope that made sense to you. Um, appreciate you watching. Check out the other videos, and we'll catch you in the next one.